Dr. John Lucio. I practice integrative medicine and pain management in Jefferson City, Missouri. And this is my wife. Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Sue. I practice conventional gynecology and integrative medicine. Welcome back to our channel. We upload one to two videos a week, so we'd love it if you subscribe. We take medical problems and treat them, prevent them with an integrative medicine approach. Hit the like button and hit this notification bell so you're notified when we upload our next video. Today we're going to be talking about menopause. Being integrative physicians, we take a whole body approach. So we cover three major questions that people have about menopause. Number one is whether to treat if you have symptoms or if you don't have any symptoms at all. The second is, do I still get a yearly checkup with a pelvic exam? And the third is sexual health. So we'll be covering some sensitive topics dealing with sexual content. So if you have young listeners, you might want to get them busy in a different part of the house. So let's get started. Menopause only happens in women, and it happens when your ovaries have quit making estrogen, which stops your ability to have children. If you're wondering if you're in menopause, your doctor will usually ask you about your periods, how while well you're sleeping, how your vagina feels, if it's dry or not, how sex is, how your orgasms feel, your nutritional habits, lifestyle, stress management, even spirituality, exercise, and any concerns you might have about your future in terms of disease prevention. Testing is usually done if you're worried about getting pregnant because a lot of times we can't tell perhaps you've had surgery or cancer treatments and you're not quite sure. I incorporate the use of a serum FSH level. It's above 40, diagnosis that you are not able to get pregnant anymore and that you don't need to use birth control anymore. Now the caveat is I've had patients that request me to repeat this level and they still have periods and they're worried they don't want to get pregnant and so I'll repeat it and sometimes the FSH level is less than 40 so that brings in some confusion. If you're ever worried just continue to use some sort of contraception until you've not had a period for more than a year. Treatment of menopause, how do we treat it if you have symptoms or if you don't have symptoms? So if you have symptoms they can be hot flashes, they can be brain fog where you can't remember things. It can be vaginal dryness or vaginal pain. It could be insomnia, night sweats, as well as mood swings. The conventional options are treating vaginal dryness with lubricants. Glycerin-based lubricants or water-based lubricants are the best. Replens is a wonderful product that you can put one applicator full in the vagina. If vaginal dryness is occurring during intercourse, then we actually examine the vagina to make sure that there's no signs of what's called atrophic vaginitis. That means your vagina needs estrogen treatment to replenish the moisture and the, the stretchiness of the vagina to accommodate the penis during intercourse. If a woman is not wanting to use estrogen type products in the vagina, then they can also use vaginal lubricants as well. And during intercourse, there's a lot out on the market now, Astroglide, Wet, KY Jelly, but those are all water-based lubricants which work really, really well. If a woman is okay with using hormones in her vagina to replenish the vagina, then we use things like estriol or estradiol creams. These are both estrogens. Estradiol is E2. It's a stronger form of estrogen cream than estriol. Estriol is E3 and it's a weak estrogen. The weak estrogen estriol will lo work locally in the vagina and a huge topic for the last 16 years has been hormone replacement therapy. And this is very controversial, so we're gonna talk about it because it's important for women and women's health. But hormone replacement therapy was used very successfully for treatment of vasomotor symptoms, which is hot flashes, night sweats, forgetfulness, prevention of heart attack, prevention of bone loss in women in the menopause. All of a sudden, 2002 hit with a Women's Health Initiative study, which was a huge trial. And what they found after five years of treatment of women with on Premarin and Provera was an increased risk of invasive breast cancer, heart attack, and stroke. So the study was terminated prematurely because of their fears of all these things happening to these women. So all of us practitioners remember in 2002 having tons of phone calls coming in through our offices with women scared to death they were on all of these medications. So we in turn took them off of them and we went into the next 16 years treating women in the lowest possible dose 
for the shortest period of time if they were suffering from menopausal symptoms. If they weren't, we were just like, great, you don't have to worry about taking hormones because they're dangerous. Then bioidentical hormones came into play, trying to give us our option that was, we were more comfortable with. Bioidentical hormones are compounded, customized for a woman and what they needed so it wasn't one size fit all. Now I'm gonna throw a whole wrench into your old system because I do prescribe Prempro, Estradiol, Vivel Dot again. And this just started this year with a new release of a book by Dr. Avram Blooming called Estrogen Matters, and we are not sponsors of that book at all. This book discusses why it is okay and actually beneficial for us to use estrogen and progesterone, and why, if we go back all the way to 2002, why that study is completely different than all the studies from around the world, including the U.S., that show the opposite since 2002. Well, what they found out was they found that the Women's Health Initiative study of 2002 was poorly conducted with a p-value that was more than one. And a statistically significant study needs to have a p-value of less than one to show that there was a correlation between hormone replacement and the incidence of invasive breast cancer, heart attack, and stroke. And it wasn't that Dr. Abram Blooming did all these studies, it's that he studied all the other studies since then and was wondering why they were in complete contrary to what they found in 2002. So I have went ahead and put all of our patients back on hormone replacement therapy, even ones without symptoms, and that's our next subject. But before I get into that, there was a HABITS trial, H-A-B-I-T-S, that studied hormone replacement in breast cancer survivors to see about if it would cause recurrence of their breast cancer. And it seemed to kind of help the Women's Health Initiative study in their findings. But it was another poorly conducted trial, even though it showed an increased recurrence of breast cancer and breast cancer survivors using estrogen and progesterone replacement therapy. It was not a good trial at all. And there's many, many, many other trials that show the opposite of prevention of recurrence of breast cancer. Is my mother had breast cancer four years ago, she's still alive, she's suffering from a lot of the common symptoms of menopause, and thought to herself, I'm going to research. So my father, who's a previous OB guy, now retired, found this book and told me about it, so I read it. I put mom back on her hormone replacement therapy, um, so her quality of life is much better. So if you decide you want to start on hormone replacement therapy, you really need to read the book first. I've had a normal screening mammogram as well as liver function testing because your liver function has to be normal for the hormone replacement therapies to work effectively. Then we can prescribe hormone replacement therapy. The second topic of part one is if you have no symptoms at all, what do you do? You still need hormone replacement because of the fact that if we start women on hormone replacement within one year of them turning into menopause, there's prevention of Alzheimer's disease, dementia, prevention of bone fractures from falls, and prevention of heart disease. The creative approach to diseases wouldn't be complete if, unless we mention botanical therapies. Now there's gonna be some individuals out there, some women who do not wanna start estrogen replacement, or have you know some real concerns. I'm going to mention the three most common ones right now. One is called black cohosh. Now the studies I've been able to read is that are able to find is that the black cohosh does provide some improvement, but just in the vasomotor um, symptoms, that is the hot flashes and the night sweats and some of the others that Dr. Sue mentioned. But it tends to be temporary, and they, most of the studies seem to show no difference between black cohosh and placebo. The next thing is called something called Rheum uh, Raponicum, um, which is another botanical. Again, there's very limited evidence that that actually improves the beta motor, motor symptoms. Um, and then the last one is St. John's Wort. Now, St. John's Wort's interesting because it <clears throat> functions very similar to antidepressants, which they themselves actually um, can improve some of the vasomotor symptoms on women, and uh, but no one's really sure how it works. The only problem with St. John's wort is that it does have a lot of what they call drug-drug interactions or drug-herb interactions, and so you've got to be careful how it's how it's used. But in all, um, botanicals are really not a very good um, or effective therapy for vasomotor symptoms. I guess you could try them if you want to do it together with estrogen, but do not, um, if you can, uh, forego using estrogen therapy. 
And two other botanicals that can be used are both soy and flax seed. But the flax seed really hasn't been found to be of benefit, even though it's a great source of omega-3s. Flax seed's great for other things, but not as good in evidence for relief of hot flashes. Soy is more variable, and they found that soy can be helpful in certain persons, in certain nationalities, in different countries, because of the soy conversion in the body. Soy contains things called isoflavones, and in Asian women, we are able to convert that more, and so in Asian women, they tend to have less vasomotor symptoms of menopause than other countries, which I think is really, really interesting. Some of the other integrative approaches to help relieve the severity of the vasomotor symptoms of menopause includes uh, broad general categories such as mind-body therapies, and these include relaxation, hypnosis, and even acupuncture. All of these have been shown to, do, to provide some relief of the symptoms. Um, our recommendation really is that you find a good practitioner that knows how to use these and how to use these in proper context. So moving on to the second part of this video is, do I get a yearly checkup or not? At what age can I finally quit seeing the gynecologist? Some doctors will have you do a pap smear every third year. Some doctors will have you do a pap smear every fifth year. After age 65, you don't have to have a pap smear. And after a hysterectomy for benign conditions, which means non-cancerous conditions while you got your uterus removed, no more pap smears after that. But having a pap is totally different than having an examination. In our practice, we do recommend that you still come every single year, no matter how old you are, until you reach an age where you don't think that a treatment's possible because of your health, or if you don't want a treatment, if we find cancer. But other than that, there's many, many other parts of our body that we need to get examined every single year. In our practice in particular, we do a complementary transvaginal ultrasound with every yearly checkup because we want to find ovarian cancer early. And then the last topic we wanted to talk about menopause was sex. Because it's so important to our lives to be sexual. I'm going to cover two different things that I hear about the most and then we'll cover one subscriber's question. If sex is uncomfortable, make sure you get one of those glycerin-based or water-based lubricants like I talked about earlier. During pelvic exams, a speculum is used. If that is very, very uncomfortable, one of my patients actually said that masturbating, which means causing your own orgasm, that does help her to tolerate her annual checkups better. So I really appreciated her sharing that, and she said we could share that with other women. The very last thing we want to do is cover one of the questions from one of our subscribers. My question is, I'm not in menopause yet. I'm 48 years old. I take progesterone on days 11 to 20 of my cycle. I sleep good those nights, but the other nights I struggle. My primary care provider said he wondered if I needed a lower dose on the other days. That's a very good question. Progesterone, if it's micronized progesterone, helps us to sleep, so that's why we always take it at night. And the reason that we are integrative physicians is we love these types of questions, because this might not be hormone related at all, and you have a situation where all of your steroid hormones are out of balance because of hormone stealing, because you made a lot of cortisol, that may be why you have problems sleeping the rest of the, the month. So it's very, very important to do a four-point cortisol screening test. I use a saliva cortisol four-point screening test to see if you've got adrenal fatigue. If you do, then we use integrative approaches to help you sleep during those other days of the month. Another problem that we see is sometimes people use too much progesterone because they think, well, progesterone helped me to sleep. I'm going to take more. In those saliva testing kits, we also test for progesterone. So if we find out that people have toxic levels of too much progesterone, that also prevents you from sleeping as well. So if you have lack of progesterone, it's the same symptoms as too much progesterone. So it's really, really important to check hormone levels. If you're on hormones and it's not quite working like it should be, don't just keep adding on or messing with things. Like we would never take thyroid hormone and just mess with the dose. We always check the levels. So with hormones, we like to do the same thing, check levels. All right, that's it for today, and thank you for joining us. We really, really do enjoy doing these videos for you all. That's a good one. That was very good.